Hey, Susan Ragsdale here with Right Creations Group, and I am with Melissa MacArthur, whom I adore. She's a brilliant thinker. She teaches critical thinking. She is an editor. editor. Uh, she is a writer and associate, associate publisher. publisher yeah. Associate publisher. And so I asked Melissa to sit down with me as we're looking at great group reflections to talk about critical thinking because that is one of the classes she teaches at college. So, Melissa, let's start with critical thinking. Why is it important? Why are you teaching it? And oh, gosh. Um, at the college where I teach, it is part of their core curriculum. Um, we have the regular introduction to writing, and then we have a critical reading class, and then critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And so it is very research-based, and they get to analyze all of the things that they're reading, um, the arguments that they're making, um, you know, all the things. One of the papers I even assign is to watch a news program and make mm -hmm. sure that it fits with the standards, the high standards that we expect of academic discourse. And so those are skills that are very hard to develop. Mm -hmm. um, there are skills, even when I started teaching the class, I'm like, oh, I wasn't doing this. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of times people can get all the way through college degrees and grad school and not understand why they're thinking about what they're thinking mm -hmm. uh, or how they're thinking about it. So that's, that's a big part of, of what I do. Okay, so, which is exactly why I wanted to talk to you. So Great Group Reflections is we talk about the importance of asking questions and why it's important to uh, think and reflect, and we provide activities to kind of help bring closure and stuff. But I want to dig into some of the what are you teaching students specifically about critical thinking? Okay. How are you helping? Tell me how you're teaching critical thinking. It is important, so what are you doing? Break it down. Maybe that'll be helpful for tips for other people. Here. Okay. One of the tools that we use is um, Linda Paul and Richard Elder's uh, information from criticalthinking.org. And they have it broken down into um, elements of critical thinking, like asking, you know, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. um, what is the question that I'm asking? Um, what assumptions do I make? What assumptions does the other party make? Um, and it goes through eight different elements. And then the next part of it is the standards of critical thinking. So making sure that it's accurate and precise mm -hmm. and you know it has all of these, it meets these high standards for thinking about the quality of the content um, and thinking about you know how the depth and breadth, you know, is it broad enough, um, but also is it going deep enough? Mm -hmm. um, and the assignment I mentioned earlier about the news broadcast, a yeah. lot of times what they find it with that one is that it either has depth or breadth, but not both. Uh, uh, okay. Because if it's, you know, the amount of time you have with something uh, visual like that, and visual media is really what people consume now, um, they either have time to look at one small topic very deeply, or go over a whole bunch of things very quickly. Gotcha. And so, you know, trying to find a good balance between those two. Uh, the other part of it is the character traits mm -hmm. of a critical thinker. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're good readers a lot of times. Um, I teach the students to read critically, uh, you know, read everything quietly with a pen in hand or pencil, um, you know, annotate the text. That's one of the things that we go over pretty um, in a lot of detail is how to how to read um, and how to read critically. So looking for you know what is their main idea, what is what assumptions are they making, what are they making um, about the reader mm -hmm. and about life in general, uh, what's their conclusion, what's the point they're trying to make, and um, so we go through that. The textbook we use is um, Gerald Nosich's Learning to Think Things Through. Oh, nice. And so it's a um, it's a very it's a small text. Um, it's it's very accessible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's only about this about this thick, mm -hmm. and um, but it goes through all these things so wonderfully. Um, so we really really like that. But the um, Linda Paul and Richard Elder, the mm -hmm. information is based on their work, and so their website has a whole bunch of really cool interactive, like pie chart things okay. that you can you can use. So do you have a, a favorite reflection activity that you use? Because I'm sure you don't want them to just critically think 
about text. You want them to apply that yes. back home between relationships mm -hmm. and issues and how you decide what politician you're going to vote for and right. all of that. So, uh, the very first paper assignment I give them, and they typically hate it, uh, is I make them think about a decision they made in the past, uh, preferably a bad decision, mm -hmm. and think about what they were thinking then and how did they go from needing to make a decision to the decision they made and you know mm -hmm. if they use critical thinking because sometimes even though they see it reflectively as a bad decision there were worse options gotcha so they may have made the best decision they could have mm -hmm. in that moment in time and so they we talk a lot about that in class and then when they do um, when they turn the papers in one of the things that they have to do is um, they have to write a little, like, one-page paper. You know, mm -hmm. have a list of questions, you know, what um, impediments did you face when you were mm -hmm. writing the paper? Did you procrastinate? Uh, did you tend to ignore stuff that you knew didn't really agree with what you were writing? Right. Um, did you skim the material if they had to read, um, you know, research for it? And um, so I start with that. Mm -hmm. And then I get the paper where they had to watch the news broadcast. And their last paper is a um, research project, and we work on it all semester, but they start with just gathering the research, doing an annotated bibliography, and then the paper, and then the, another reflection of it. So, you know, asking similar questions, like what, what was your process? Um, what worked well? What didn't? What did you struggle with? Mm -hmm. And um, it, I usually read the reflections first, uh -huh. and I find that they're very insightful, um, because sometimes, they think that the worst parts are the parts they did the best on. Hmm. Uh, it's very strange. Um, you know, and we talk about a lot about that uh, perspective. You know, because the things that you uh, struggle with sometimes you put more effort in because you're like, ha, oh, I know this is going to be hard, so I have to work on it. Mm -hmm. And um, so just kind of having that realization mm -hmm. for the, a lot of the students is really um, eye opening. So besides papers, which you have to require mm -hmm. right. as a professor, when you're trying to get them to engage more in class, what are some of your tips for pulling out um, the shy ones or the reluctant ones and, you know, getting mm -hmm. beyond that shoulder um, shrug, yes, no? What, what are your tips for pulling out? Well, we do a discussion from day one. Uh, I start, I do very little lecture, or if I do lecture, and even with my first time freshman, um, if I do lecture, it's like five minutes of a concept, and then we talk about it and ask questions and practice, whatever it is, and I get them to get up and write on the board, um, I'll have them work in small groups, mm -hmm. um, think, pair, share is an activity that I do a lot, um, where I have them kind of just jot down some things that they're thinking, turn to a neighbor, and, you know, talk to that neighbor about it, and then I have them, um, the classroom I'm usually in is um, like five rows long rows, so I'll have them collaborate with the other people on their row, and um, then they'll share with the whole class. They'll, a lot of times I'll have them pick somebody to be a spokesperson, uh -huh. that way, you know, the ones who don't want to talk in front of the whole class, um, you know, they don't have to. They usually do by the end of the semester, though, uh, even just yeah. because they've had to share, um, so. Okay. All right, so Melissa and I were grabbing a quick five, six, seven minutes here at a sci-fi fantasy con, which is another shared yeah. love that we have. But we love young people, and we want to help them think well and reason well. And so if you um, like this, check out one of the resources she mentioned. In addition to by Great Group, great group Reflection, 60 Compelling Challenges to Prompt Self-Discovery and Critical Thinking. Thank you. Thank you.